Well, hello again. Great to be together. Uh, yeah, I've been meaning to mention this as we've been going through this. I, I want to thank you, each and every one of you as individual believers, followers, maybe people making inquiry about who God might be. Um, I, you know, God knows where you are and who you are. And I just want you to know that I count it a privilege that you allow me the opportunity to share God's word with you and to speak truth uh, into your life. I, I do not take that lightly. I just want you to know that means a lot to me. And I just want to thank you for your participation in going through these devos today together. It means a lot to me. And I know God is honored by your presence and your involvement in this process. Let's, let's move on. Nehemiah chapter 8. I remember he's been rebuilding the wall. They get the wall finished up. And in verse 8, it says, So they read distinctly from the book in the law of God, and they gave the sense and helped them understand the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites who taught the people, said to the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God to not mourn nor weep, for all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our God, to our Lord. Do not sorrow, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. We hear that from time to time, but in the context of this, it's so powerful. They had gone through and opened up and began to read the word. And as they read the word, notice it used the word distinctly from the book of the law of God. They were very circumspect in what they're reading. They were going through it systematically. And then they gave the sense and helped them understand the reading. In other words, they gave the sense and the meaning. They gave the what what was what God was saying by what it's kind of like what we're doing right now. It's that kind of thing. And you too can do the same thing. As you read and as God speaks to your heart, you can share that with someone else. And then it gives you give the sense and the meaning. It's so important. Keep it in context. Keep it real in that sense, you know, and be able to share what's on your heart. It's great. And so this they, they are the people are when they hear the truth from God's word and they know who they are and how they haven't been living the life that God really would want them to live. They were convicted and they were grieved and they were, began to kind of mourn and weep because they were just sorrowful for, because they had failed God. But then they're saying, no, no, you're offering up these sacrifices. We're reading God's word. Man, you know, don't, don't, don't be grieved. Today, is, this is a, a, a day of joy and, and the joy of the Lord is your strength. And I think that is so important. This is one thing that I've observed oftentimes the enemy tries to rob us of, and that is the joy of the moment. Look, your life sum total and my life sum total is all consumed in the combined multiples of many moments put together. That's life, many moments. And I think it's, I've, I've really learned, <laughs> I think I've learned more from having grandkids in that sense that with these little guys, there's just these little moments that, you know, I, I, I just treasure them. You know, I, I treasure just looking at them and watching them enjoy doing something. Sometimes it's for the first time. I mean, we'll, I, you know, how many times when we were little kids, we'd jump around and stomp through puddles and splash. I always liked doing that. Well, now I get to do it all over again with my little grandkids and, and especially the little grandsons, man. They really are big puddle splashers. So, But, you know, it's just that what I'm driving at is just the moments of life and the joy of those moments. Satan would seek to rob you of that. And don't let it happen, man. The joy of the Lord, it is strength for us as we look to the Lord. And you know what? Joy isn't based on circumstances. Joy is something that's imported into your life by the power of the Spirit. It's something that came with this agreement of you giving your life to the Lord, me giving my life to the Lord. God comes up, takes residence into our lives, and it's part of the work of the Holy Spirit. It's part of the fruit of God's Spirit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, long-suffering. You know, God wants to continue to bring joy into your life. Uh, look for it and enjoy it. God bless you.